Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Um, before we get started, we want to thank you all for your support that you've been giving the camera company. We, we're very, very honored that, uh, that you're staying with us. And when this is all done and the social distancing's over and everything, we, we look forward to being there for you and, and uh, seeing you in the store. Um, as Ward will point out in a minute, but I'd like to point out too, uh, if you need something, please shop online with us or give the, call, the store a call. There's someone there from 10 o'clock until four, was it Monday through Saturday now? Monday through Saturday, yep. And any orders over $50, we're more than happy to pay the shipping on. And we also will offer some curbside pickup. You pull up to the front door and uh, either Ward will, you know, he used to play football. You should see his spiral. He can take a 100 to 400 millimeter lens and launch it right through your window. Not a problem. Now we'll do some curbside pickup for you. But uh, we just want to make sure that you're shopping local because we want to be here when this is all over. So thank you. Thank you again. Uh, today we're going to talk about importing photos to Lightroom and sorting like a pro. So before we get started, let's talk about what Lightroom is and what Lightroom does. Lightroom is basically a photo editing program. And there's a kind of a misnomer there when people talk about the <clears throat> fact that you import them into Lightroom and then when you close your Lightroom, you see where it says backup. Now, when that backup happens, the only thing it's doing is backing up your actual Lightroom catalog. And how this works is that you're putting your photos in a file and when the process of import happens, you're telling Lightroom where those photos are at so that you can then go ahead and use them to edit. Since it's non-destructive, what I do is I do this. I start by creating a folder somewhere on my desktop or on my computer somewhere on an external hard drive. I don't care where it's at. And I call that folder, let's expand this window a little bit so you can see it better. I call that Lightroom resource files, photos go here. <clears throat> now, I can get kind of slap happy sometimes when I come back from a photo shoot and it's late at night and you, know, you wanna get things loaded so you can start working on them. So I put photos go here as a reminder to myself on where I wanna put those photos. And what I do then is I create a file folder where I wanna put that particular group of folders, photos. So what this does is this is your first line of organization. We're gonna see how that works as we go through this in a, in a couple minutes. But the first thing I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna create a new folder. Uh, I do this all the time in my sleep. So when I go to do this in, in public, it all screws up on me. I'll do it this way. I wanna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this one sample. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that into my Lightroom resource files photos go here. See, we've got a folder now a sample, there's nothing in it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my SD card. I went out yesterday and took a few shots. Come on SD card, log in. There we go. So I was wandering around with my Nikon 750. When you open up the SD card, you're going to see that there's a DCIM file in there somewhere. And in that file, there are all the pictures that you had, had taken. So I'm going to select all of those images and drag those into drag, copy, whatever methodology works for you. I'm going to put them in that file folder that says sample. So we're adding just a little over a gigabyte worth of information. Once that's done, I go ahead and eject the card because I don't need it anymore. And notice we've done all this without even opening Lightroom yet. So now we have all these images in a new folder, which we've named sample. Now we're going to go ahead and open up Lightroom. I need to make my screen just a little bit smaller because I've got some zoom things hiding what I need on here. There we go. In the library mode, come down to the bottom left and you can click on the word import. And what that's going to do is that's going to open up a dialogue window for you to import your images. If you choose not to do it that way, you can also go to the file drop down menu and do import photos and video. Either way works. Both of these methods get either where you need to go. And now what you're going to do is you are going to navigate through this left-hand source file to find your photos. 
So in this particular case, I know that it is in my users folder and I know I put them on my desktop. And you can see, I'll even make this window just a little bit wider here. Actually, it won't let me do it right now. Anyway, what you can see here is I've got a file folder that says Lightroom Resource Files Photos Go Here. And if I open it up, you can see all of those file folders that were in my Lightroom Resource File Photos Go Here are all in here. I come down to the word sample or to my folder for sample. And these were the images that I shot yesterday just to have something to import today. Now, Across the top, we get some choices. We can copy them in as a DNG, and the DNG is the Adobe Digital Negative Format, which they use cross-platform in Adobe. We don't want to do that. We can copy them. We don't want to do that because we already have the files where we want them. We can move the files. We don't want to do that. They're already in the folder that we want them in. All we want to do is add. So these photos are going to be added to the catalog without moving them from the location that they are stored at on your computer. With that being said, we come down the right-hand side, and I normally build a standard preview, and I don't import suspected duplicates. This is a wonderful tool because let's say the same day you added another three or four photos and you forgot to clear off the photos from the previous shoot, you don't want to start creating duplicates. So just import, you know, don't import suspected duplicates. You just want to import the images that you want right now. During your import, you get some choices. You can add things like, uh, develop settings. So if you, you've got a particular setting you want to use, you can do that. You can add metadata, for example, like um, let's, let's say your uh, um, copyright information. You can go in and add a copyright here at this point in time. Also, you can keyword. So I'm just going to keyword these. Uh, I'm going to keyword them Lodi and then sample. And then when I'm all done with this, I can hit import. But before I do that, I want to show you one other thing you can do too, is you can uncheck all the photos by using the little button at the bottom and then come in and just select the photos you want to import, or you can import them all. We're going to import all of these. Now on the bottom right, I'm going to click on import. And what there's going to happen is in my Lightroom catalog in my library now, I'm going to get a folder it's going to create a folder in there called sample and all those photos are now in Lightroom ready for me to use. This to me is the simplest way to import images into Lightroom and keep them in a very organized fashion. So let me show you something here. This is why it works so well. I'm going to make this one a little smaller and I'll bring this window next to it. If we look at the Lightroom resource files photos go here in the library module of Lightroom. You will see that it mimics the file folder that I have on my computer. I have the top file, Lightroom resource files photos go here. And then as I go down, you can see that all these file folders mimic it exactly. And that way, this is your first line of organization. By keeping everything in one single file folder, like the Lightroom resource file, uh, files, photos go here folder. When I go to back up not only my catalog, if I back up this folder, I've backed up all the photos that are in my Lightroom catalog. So that way I don't lose anything. I make backups of my backups. I'm a little paranoid. I keep a minimum of three copies of everything. I've got a hard drive that hangs off the computer that they're on and then external hard drives. One goes into a safety deposit box. One happens to be in the console of my car and another one is in my briefcase. So by having them in these three places, what happens, or four places in this case, what happens is that if the bank blows up, my car crashes, the house burns down, hopefully I'll have my briefcase with me. So it, it would be kind of hard for, you know, for data recovery uh, to, to go awry having it in four places. It keeps it simple and your backup strategy can be very easy this way. Now here's something that happens. If, for example, I take this file folder on my desktop and I move that sample into my Lodi around town folder on my desktop. You're going to see now that in Lightroom, it just got a question mark put on it. Because what happened was, is I managed it outside of Lightroom. If I come into Lightroom and I need to reassociate it, all I have to do is click on find the missing folder, 
Come on, open up the dialog box. Here we go. We're going to go to our desktop. We're going to go to Teaching Lightroom. We're going to go to the resource files. And I'm going to come down here to around Lodi, find my folder, choose it. And you'll see what happened was is it moved it right into. Mm. Oh, good. Around Lodi. So you can see how what happens here is that Lightroom is where you want to manage everything. So if I want to put that back out into the main directory, I just hold it. I drag it to where I want it to go. It says, do I move these files? Yes, I do. And it moved them, but you'll also notice that it moved them in the folder that's on my hard drive. So anytime you want to do any management of your images, move them using the Lightroom, uh, you want to call it a finder, you want to call it an explorer window, whatever you want to call it, manage it inside a Lightroom. Because by doing it there, what happens is Lightroom then knows where it's at. So think of it, each image is a book in the library. And the librarian has a card catalog system. And that card catalog system says that this particular book is on this shelf, in this row, in this position. Lightroom knows where it's at. But if someone came into the library and started moving the books around, the card catalog system would be scrambled and wouldn't know where anything is at. So what you need to do is you have to manage everything from inside a Lightroom. So we're going to go ahead and close this for right now. And I want to show you how easy this is to do. So for example, inside of this file folder that I named sample, I decide I want to change the name. If you right click, you can come in and rename this. So we're going to name, I don't know what we want to call it. Let's call it, uh, we'll call it social distance because I've got uh, an image here that people were painting on uh, barriers and I thought it was kind of funny. If I change the name in Lightroom, we'll open this back up. Come on, there we go. You can see that what happened is it changed the name in Lightroom for, or uh, on my hard drive for me also. So all of the image maintenance is gonna be done inside of Lightroom. Also, if I decided that inside of social distance, I wanted to create another folder, I just right click on social distance, say create a folder inside there, and now I can name it. Well, well I can type, really I can. We'll call it six feet. Now what it just did is it just added a folder inside of there called six feet. I can grab any of the images. Let's grab that whole series of images and drag it into that folder six feet. Tell it to move it. And what we have done now, we'll open this back up. Inside of social distance now is a folder six feet. Inside that folder, those images were moved there. I hope this is making sense to everybody because the people I can see are shaking their head yes. Randall, does this make sense? I think you're still online. Yep, it okay. does. Rick? Yeah. Is this making sense to everybody? I see we've got a few people that are still muted. Questions at this point? I don't, I don't have a chat window here. So if you've got a chat window, go ahead and you know, throw in a question there. And we can also uh, definitely answer the questions as we go along. So basically, their first line of organization in Lightroom is to create a folder where you want your images to go for that particular shoot. Now this works really well because let's say for example here I've got this Lodi around town where I've got the Ag Fair in here, a couple years of Ag Fair. I've got some random things. I've got Art in the Park, uh, Lodi Fire Department was, was out practicing one day and I caught them. So I can have these in here. So let's say for example you go to Florida every year. You could have a folder that says Florida and inside that folder you could have 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. You could have each year. So you when you go to look for something, it makes it real easy for you to go in Lightroom and say, hey, you know what, I want to look at Florida. In this case, I want to look at Lodi. I want to look at the fire department in Lodi, and I can bring up, you know, the fire department. This gal actually that particular day, give it a second to build a preview. She was the only one working. Everybody else was out there standing around. 
So of course I took the picture of her and I took the picture of everybody standing around. And, and when I saw the fire chief later, I said, you know, that's just not fair. You guys, you got to get to work. And he laughed at me and we had a good time. But the idea is that you can create a main folder to add subfolders to. Let's say you're a birder. You can have a folder that says birds and inside of that folder, you could have it broken down by, you know, eagles and ooha birds or whatever. I don't even know the name of all the birds out there, owls you know, swans, um, we've, we've got a lot of, uh, of um, birds hitting our bird fear this morning and I should get the book out and learn birds. I'm just not a big bird guy. Sorry about that, folks. Um, but the idea is that you can now go in and organize and this way it makes it real super easy to find things. Now let's take it to the next level. I've got the Lodi Fire Department here and I can look at them in a grid view in the library mode and put them all up on the screen and I can also make the images larger or smaller by adjusting my thumbnails. Now across the bottom here, if you click on this little right arrow or this down arrow here, you can add or subtract what you see across the bottom. So in this particular case, what I've got is I've got most everything checked. I really don't have navigate and slideshow because I don't care about those, but I've got the painter on there and some other things on here. Now what happens is, is that I can come in and I can sort them by capture time. So for example, I did a, a wedding where I shot with two different cameras. And when I loaded all my images, what I'm able to do is tell it to sort all those images in that folder by the capture time. So that what happened was while I was using a 70 to 200 to take certain shots and a 24 to 70 to take other shots, by having the ability to put them into the timeline, I didn't have them herky-jerky in there. They came right as I shot the images by picked up one camera, put the other camera down, they put them all right back in order. So capture time is going to be a huge way in order for, if, especially if you're shooting a couple different cameras, uh, or you go out with a group of people and pull your images together, you can put everything into that timeline. But now I never throw anything out because I never know when I might want something. So if I look at these and I say, I really like this image, this first image, I can use the pick flag. There's a little pick flag down here at the bottom. There's a white flag. And then if I go to the next image and I like that image, I really don't care, I don't care. This one's kind of cool. I can use the pick flag to pick a couple images. And we're just gonna pick a couple for the sake of this conversation here. And now I've picked a number of them. The next bar right below it is a filters bar. Now, what you can do is if your filters are off or on, you can, you can select by using the drop down menu here. I want only flagged images. So, what it does is it hides the images that you didn't flag. So, now this is only going to show you the images that, that you're interested in. You haven't gotten rid of them if I turn that off. See, all the images are still there. But now I'm just going to the images that I want to look at at this particular time. How would that be helpful if you go out and shot 100 bird shots and, there's, and you can go through and just sort to find the three that you like? If you're unmuted, get, let me hear you. If not, give me a thumbs up if this makes sense. It makes sense to me. Randall gave me both a thumbs up and uh, <laughs> hi, Linda. Thank you. Did you hear me, Dave? I did, Rick. Okay, please acknowledge that you heard me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rick. You're fragile. I'm, I forgot. I know. <laughs> So, so this way you can go through and sort. If, if you want, one of my methodologies is if I shoot a portrait session and let's say I shoot 300 images and I need to deliver 10, what I will do first is I will go through and flag. Then I come back through on a second pass and I play a game of using stars. So let's say I like this image, I will give it one star. And this image, I'll give one star. This image, I'll give one star. And that's all I want. Now what I can do is I can now use the stars to now sort it down to the next level. And from here, I may say, okay, now I want to give this one two stars and this one two stars. And now when I go look at anything that is one star or greater is going to show up, anything that is two star or greater will show up. So now I can go from a very, very large number of images and keep narrowing it down to the images I want. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. That's working. So Lightroom makes it very easy for you to take a large number of images and sort them down to a smaller number of images. I'm going to share one last thing with you before we end today. I hope this is all helpful so far, but I want to get into how the metadata works. Metadata is data about data. So let's, let's go ahead and just turn off the filters here. I'm going to just come in and do filters off. That's going to put all my images back. And I'm also going to go all the way to the top level here of my Lightroom resource files photos go here. By going to that top level, or I can also do it by doing all photos in the, in the catalog. Either way, one will get me there. It depends on how you've got this set up. But by going to all photos in the catalog and being in this grid sorting system, at the top, I get a menu up here. And this menu allows me to search by metadata. So what it tells me is I can look at the date images were taken, the cameras that were used, the lenses that were used, uh, whether they're labeled. Um, it makes it very easy. So if I want to see everything I shot in 2020 in this catalog, I just click on 2020 and everything that was shot in 2020 highlights for me. If I want to take it to the next level and say, I want to shoot, see everything I shot in April, now it brings it just to the April shot. This is what was shot in March. If I want to see what I shot in February, it looks like I was doing some copy shots for the store in February. January, Looks like some copy shots and maybe a headshot or something. If I want to go back and see everything I shot in 2011, there's the image from 2011. Now this also works at whatever level you're on. So if I go to this folder of Lodi around town and we come back into the metadata, you can see how it's narrowed down that for, uh, 2015, 2017, 2019, 2020, where things were shot. It tells me which cameras were used to take the images. It also tells me what lenses were used. So this is where it can be huge. Let's say, for example, you're struggling and deciding on, you want to buy a new lens, but you just don't know what lens you want. If you click on your metadata, and I'm going to go all the way to the right-hand one here, you can change what it looks for. And I'm going to tell it, I want to look for the focal length of the lens, not what lens it was, but what the focal length was. So you can see 33 different lenses were used here. So a 150 to 500 was used, a 150 to 600 was used, a 16 to 35, 105 millimeters. So there are a number, you know, a bunch of Tamron lenses were being used here. But by going in and looking at just the focal length, I can start to look through here and see how many images I took. So I took 161 images out of my 1,279 images with a 28 millimeter lens. If I scroll down through it farther, that looks like that's the, that was the focal length of choice at the time. I don't have any lens selected, do I? Nope, I don't. But what I can do is, okay, I shot this with a 58 millimeter lens. I get a chuckle out of this one every time I bring him up. Come on, load. That wasn't the final image. I did a session for the bigwigs for the uh, Race for the Cure. There we go. And um, this guy, he's a dentist. I don't know if you want to go to him as a dentist or not, but he was, he was kind of fun. But you can go through and check out and find out. So if you find out that, let's say you're shooting a lot of stuff at in that 50 millimeter range, and you're shooting it with a 24 to 70, and you don't have a 50 millimeter prime, this might be a good way for you to say, you know what, maybe I should give a 50 millimeter prime a try. Also, if you, if you have a couple cameras that you're using on a regular basis, you might see the camera that you use more often than that. Um, if you went to Florida in 2017, I think I'd load it in 2015. Uh, what you're able to do is you're able to click in and, and check real quick. I know, let's say I did something in May. Now there's my May shots from 2015. So it gives you the ability to go in and, and sort on a very quick basis to find the images that you want. Does this make sense to everybody? 
Has anyone used the uh, the metadata before? Not me. Okay. Well, let's throw this at you next. Well, I'm going to go all the way to the top level again. We're going to get out of this and go to everything. So I've got nothing sorted. And I'm going to come into text now. And in text, if I type in the word Rick, I have Rick as a few of the, uh, of the images in here. There you are with your associates out, uh, you know, having a board meeting or something. So by using the word, the keyword Rick, what I'm able to do is find all the images that have Rick in it. If I come in now and put in, as we did today, I put the word sample in. Well, spell it right. And it just has to contain any searchable field. I must have used this as other, as other tags for things in the past. So you can see that the keyword in the right-hand side is Lodi sample. So if we say it instead of contains, contains all, and I type the word Lodi before it, now it limits us down to this group that we just did today. So you can use keywords. So let's say, for example, you're a birder, you can put in and maybe use owl, you know, identify the different species of birds. So you can tag keyword owl for all your owls, you know, um, hawks, whatever. And then no matter where they're at in your catalog, because you've taken them over the years, if you type in the word owl, you're going to get all your owl photos to pop up. So what you're able to do now is import and sort in a real easy, fast way. And any of these that I have now, and I wanted to create a new folder out of, let's say, I can come and create a new folder. I can move those all into the new folder to put them all together. Is this making sense to everybody? Yeah, it is. Is this is. helpful? Yes. Okay, can I do that from here or do I have to go here? Ward, can we make sure everybody's unmuted? Because I don't see that I have the control to do that right now. I was uh, muted myself. Oh, there you go. Everyone that, everyone that uh, has the option to be unmuted is now unmuted. Fantastic. Any questions? How much information, Dave, do you put in those keywords? Uh, how much do you want to put in there? That's what um, I mean. the, the, the thing is you can do keywords and, and then, okay. I've, so, so let's say, let's say you didn't keyword it when you brought the images in. This is a really good thing. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go down to my, I'm going to go down to my, here, here is the, here is the, uh, folder I created inside the folder and I've got these, uh, seven different photos sitting up here. If I select them all, and you can use Apple or Command A to select them all, I can come in here now and I can put in a comma and then add another keyword to it. And let's say the next keyword I want to do is, um, uh, what do we want to do, sign? Concrete. Okay, concrete. Um, street. So I've now got Lodi sample, sign, concrete, and street are the keywords. Now they're attached to each of these images. And when you click on any of the images, you'll see those keywords. So if I click on, uh, I'm going to just go to a different image. You can see you can see that the the keywords in the right hand box change based on what image I'm in. So now when I go to my text, I'm going to go all the way to the top level here. When I go to my text as a sorting methodology. I can put in uh, street and it brought up a bunch of stuff because of the fact um, street is the keyword in, in this other one too. So now if I put a comma here and do concrete, yeah. now it sorts it down. So having multiple keywords can help you sort things out. A lot of times what I find is I do stupid things and I will add keywords where I, you know, I don't want them, but what my saving grace is, 
is that as I start to put the keywords in, it starts to narrow me down and then I can click on an image that I really want and see the keywords I use for that image and then take it from there. You know, keywords are one of those things where you can go to whatever extreme level you want. And then it's also like with any other search engine, you can tell it in the text box, do it any searchable field or only search the keyword field. Um, I leave it normally in any searchable field. And then you can change, does it contain or it contains all? So if I just want contains, see it brings back other images that I really don't want. By doing contains all, I'm now narrowing it down to where I want it to be. So you can change it and make it very, very specific, very granular. I tend to leave it a little more open because what happens is, let's say I spell a word wrong, let's say I fat finger something into it. Um, by leaving it more open, what I'm able to do is um, I don't get as frustrated. So if you're a perfect typist, you never make a mistake, you can take this thing down to be so granular that it will, you know, um, you, you can sort them really, really finely, but I, I just don't, I don't go there. I leave it a little bit wider because it normally gets me to where I need to go. So thank you folks. Uh, Randall, thank you for your compliment and comment. Um, don't forget the store is open from 10 to four. Monday through Saturday for someone to take calls. Um, if you're not printing some of these images, uh, we did one on how to export uh, about a week and a half ago. That is archived on YouTube. What we'd like you to do is uh, make sure that, uh, that you uh, make some prints. And uh, as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell so every time a new uh, video is put up there, you're notified of it. Follow us on Facebook and uh, keep looking at uh, Linda, thank you. I, I'm thinking about keeping it. Linda commented, my beard's looking good. Um, everybody says I need a different than the gray background because I blend in, my gray hair blends in. Maybe I'll change it next week. But next Thursday, we're gonna do another one. And I think next Thursday is going to be on uh, either basic editing or working with virtual copies and uh, collections. I don't remember which order it is, but we'll be doing those in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Consider a class on designing and printing a book with camera company. Absolutely, Randall, we'll do something on that. Uh, give us some time. I got a feeling we're gonna be stuck doing this for a couple more weeks. So anything to add, Ward? Uh, not right now, nope, but I think that bookmaking one would be excellent. Because I'm thinking uh, we're pretty booked for this month, but then next month we're gonna continue doing these and we're gonna open it up to more uh, camera company-based stuff instead of vendor-based. So that would be an excellent one. Yeah, that would be really good. Lightroom does have a book module in there that if you guys want to go in and play with, it's available. Um, it allows you to export them as PDF files. I'm not 100% sure how that's going to work translating from Lightroom into our software. But um, there's, definitely, there's definitely something there. We'll figure it out. Luminar 4 and Lightroom together. We could probably do something on that. I will have to uh, call it my Luminar 4. Uh, program and brush up on it again. It's a nice little program to use, absolutely. I've been using Luminar for quite a bit. They have some really cool um, sky replacements and some really nice editing for portraits. But unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with Lightroom. So Dave, you and I need to get together on that. There you go. We'll, we'll, we'll have like dueling banjos. I'll be on one screen with Lightroom, you'll be on the other one with Luminar. We'll throw it back and forth. Yeah, I know they do have a plugin for a Lightroom and for Apple Photos. And I've used the Apple Photos one and it works pretty slick. Cool, yeah, we'll have to check that out. Well, again, thank you everyone. Thank you for your time this morning and I will see you next Thursday morning at nine o'clock. Have a great week, go out and take some great shots and uh, Share them on our Instagram, you know, tag us on Instagram so we can see what you're doing. Have a good day. Thanks, folks. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Guys. Thank you.